What comes to your mind when I say grade C refurbished Chromebook or laptop? Let me know in the comments. Inside this box is just that, it's a grade C refurbished Chromebook that launched in 2023. It's the Lenovo 500e Yoga Chromebook Gen 4. The E in the name means it's part of Lenovo's education Chromebook lineup, so it should be fairly rugged in its design, and the Yoga branding signifies that it's convertible. It's got a 12.2 inch high res display, comes with the optional garage stylus, and performance wise, my model option has the Intel N100 processor and 8 gig of DDR5 RAM. If you follow the channel on X or Threads, you may have seen my post on the recent eBay UK 20% off discount code. I used that to pick this one up from Laptop Outlet for just £144, that's about $186 US dollars. I didn't post a specific deal as it was a one-off listing for this grade C refurb, so I'm expecting there to be some signs of use and we can see straight away I haven't got the original box, as was to be expected. So let's get into the unboxing, take a look inside and see what we've got here. So first off, hopefully we've got a USB-C charger in here. Yeah. Okay, so it's a third party charger, so it's a USB-C charger. It's a light on brand, it is 65 watt by the looks of it, and that's good because that's the option that should come with this Chromebook. There are 45 watt options on some models, um, but those won't support the fast charging that this does, which allows the Chromebook to go from 0% to 80% battery in just one hour of charging. So yeah, that's the USB-C charger. Then of course I've got a UK plug to go along with it. Let's get into the Chromebook itself in this really nice bubble wrap casing. If you have watched my video from the weekend, this box and this casing are going to remind you of that. Okay, so here it is. I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these for a while. One, because it looks to share a lot of its DNA with one of my favourite Chromebooks, the Lenovo Flex 3i 12.2 inch, but a more rugged option here that also comes with the stylus. And two, because if you watch the channel, you'll know I've had various generations of the 100E, the 300E, and this, the 500E. And I'll link you to a playlist on that at the end of this video if you want to see more there. But for now, let's get rid of this box and take a closer look. Okay, so being an education model Chromebook, like some of those others I've just mentioned, it has got what feels like a more rugged build. So it's a special type of plastic that Lenovo are using here, but it, it almost feels more rubbery in these sort of bumpers on the side. Certainly feels like it's going to survive the odd knock or drop in the classroom or elsewhere. So I really like that aspect of it. You can see straight away, so there are some scratches and some marks on the lid here. So again, being a grade C, sort of fully expecting this. Um, be interesting to see what I can sort of clean up on it, but yeah, it's obviously had a bit of a life, uh, maybe taken a little bit of abuse so far, but looks like it's withstood it pretty well. Um, you know, it's, it's solid, there's not really, much flex here and get a little bit of movement out of it, but nothing I'm too concerned about. And weight wise as well, it's feeling really reasonable. It, it feels um, kind of well built and it's got some weight to it, but nothing excessive. I'll flash the actual weight up on screen for you now. And this color is Lenovo's graphite gray, which all of the models in this line, the 500E Gen 4 Yogas come in. So yeah, it's just a, uh, pretty nondescript kind of grey, but I do like the kind of the ingraining and the, the texture on the lid and just the fact that it's got those bumpers giving it a bit of a an offset lighter grey to the outside. So yeah, looking pretty nice to me. So let's have a look at the ports and connectivity on this 500E Yoga. Starting on the left hand side here, we've got the battery charge LED indicator. We've got the one and I believe only USB-C port on the device. It's a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port for power data and display out. And being Gen 2, it's gonna handle faster data transfers than the Gen 1 ports that we often see. So that's worth keeping in mind. The full size USB-A port next to it is a 3.2 Gen 1 port. And then there's a headphone and microphone combo jack. 
And then if I move things along slightly for you, you'll see that we've got the all important stylus. So it's a garage rechargeable USI pen. So if I just pop this out, should just be able to clip that out with my finger. Yeah. Let's take a look. So yeah, it looks very similar to the pen that we saw in the 300E Gen 3 model. If I just flip it on the side there, you can see the charging contacts on the sides. And then of course you've got the end of the stylus that you're going to be making contact with the screen with. So yeah, pretty nice, neat little stylus just with that Lenovo branding on the end there. And the fact that it's garaged, it's going to charge inside the Chromebook. All really nice. So Lenovo say it'll charge to 90% in just 15 seconds and that on a full charge it should allow up to 45 minutes of use. So can't really complain at that. Let's pop that back inside the Chromebook, just tucks in there and then let's have a look at the right hand side, see what we've got going on for the ports and connectivity there. So first up looks like you've got a Kensington, I think it's the nano security slot keep this locked down if it's needed to be uh, yeah, kept safe in the classroom. Then there's a HDMI version 1.4 connection. You've got a second USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port and a volume rocker, physical switch, which yeah, feels as it should. And then of course you've got the power button and I think it's got a built-in LED into the, uh, the middle of the button there. It's also Bluetooth 5.1 and Wi-Fi 6E compatible and there are just five of the 437 model options on this range that have got compatibility for an eSIM for mobile data connectivity too. This isn't one of those five. Okay, so let's flip it over, take a look underneath and see what we've got going on there. So we have got the speaker grills on either corner. You can see next to the stylus there on this side. And then of course on the corresponding side as well. Nothing else um, with the N100 processor. You can also get it with the N200 processor, both from Intel. They're fanless, they don't require a fan. So yeah, there's no uh, vents or grill for a fan here. Uh, looks like it'll be fairly easy to get inside with the screws. So hopefully they're fairly practical to work on being again, expecting to spend most of their life in the classroom. And I think what you've got here is a drain hole for the spill resistant keyboard as well. So yeah, all looks decent and very practical as we'd expect there on the bottom. Let's open it up and have a look inside. So it is a yoga model, as I say, it is fully convertible. So I'm just gonna flip that screen right around. So we've got the keyboard deck. I'll just show you what it's like width-wise now with the screen on its back. So you see that from both sides. Just get an idea of if you're holding that in tablet mode. It has actually powered on, but we'll come back to the screen and getting set up in just a minute. Instead, first, let me show you the keyboard deck. And uh, we've got a special thing or two to look at on here. So first of all, it's all looking nice and clean. But the thing I want to draw your attention to is we've got the first of two cameras here. So we've got a world facing camera up on the keyboard deck. So this is going to be a five megapixel camera and you can think about it very much like the camera on the rear of your phone. So when you've got it like this in tablet mode, you're looking at the screen the other side and you've got that camera facing out. That is an option on the 500 e Yoga Gen 4 here. So not all of the models will have it. So if you are looking to buy, definitely check the spec. I'll link you to a video now where you can check the full spec of any Lenovo very easily. So yeah, that's definitely one to watch for. Looking at the keyboard itself, so key travel, kind of uh, medium key travel to a little bit shorter, I'd say. Keys feel good, quite responsive. Um, I think they're anti-pry, as I say, it's spill resistant. It's all just designed to be fairly tough. Again, expecting that life in the classroom. The keyboard deck itself in general and the size of it reminding me more and more of the Flex 3i 12.2 inch, which this Chromebook is very similar to in a number of different ways with the spec. Really, if you ignore the stylus, there's a lot of very similar options. 
There's no backlit option on the keyboard here though, whereas there is an option for that in the Flex3i 12.2 inch uh, touchpad. So yeah, it feels well seated. Nice click to it, nice and smooth. So yeah, that's uh, decent to see. And again, being a grade C, I wasn't expecting any damage or any issues inside the keyboard deck. I was expecting that and the screen to be clean. And as you can see, they really both are, or at least we can see the keyboard deck is at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna get this powered up. I'm gonna add my test user and we'll take a look at the display and I'll cover off the remaining spec. And as it's a grade C, we'll have a poke about, check out the battery health, see how many cycles it's had and how that's looking as well. Okay, set up with my test user now and it's just finishing installing the rest of my Android apps. Just to take you through the core specs, so I've got the Intel M100 processor, but there's also options with the N200 processor. I've got eight gig of low power DDR5 RAM, but there's also some options with just four gig. And I've got 64 gig of VMMC 5.1 storage. There's options on either side of that, 32 gig, which I'd tend to avoid if I were you, and there's also 128 gig, which I think would have been preferable. Checking out this display in a bit more detail, so it's a taller 16 by 10 ratio, so it should be better for productivity with documents and the like. It's a 12.2 inch display that can run at 1920 by 1200, so it's a WUXGA resolution, so that's a step up from full HD but right away we can see it's not running at that full resolution out of the box. So let's take a look and update that. Okay, so jumping in to give you an example of what you can fit on the screen at the moment. So this is with the default resolution out of the box. If we then pop down into settings and just type in display, and we should get display size here. Yeah, so we can see out of the box, the default is running at 1200 by 750, but we can bump that all the way up here or down, depending on how you look at it, to 1920 by 1200. So that's that resolution above full HD that I'm talking about. Let's have a look now at what we're fitting on the screen in terms of those videos on the web page. So just looking at the channel here, you can see straight away how much more you're getting on the display there. So yeah, it's looking really nice like this. I think the only thing I may find is when I run it in tablet mode, I might want to drop that resolution down a bit. That's certainly what I'm finding when I'm using this new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 11 at the moment. So you may have seen the video on that one. If not, I'll link it up in the top right for you now to check out. But yeah, I think this is gonna be the best resolution for running certainly in desktop mode, taking full advantage of what this display can offer. Just looking at some other elements of the display, of course it's touch as already mentioned, and it supports the stylus of course, so just dragging it around with the laser pointer setting on, you can see it there. Do consider subscribing if you want to see more on the stylus and using it. I'll certainly cover more of that in the full review. It's also nice and bright. So Lenovo claimed 300 nits of brightness. It's looking pretty decent to me. And it's coated in Gorilla Glass. So hopefully it's gonna resist any scratches. They don't say which version, but that's always positive to hear. And at the top of the screen, we've got the privacy slider for the webcam. The webcam I have on this one is just 720p but there are full HD specs available as well. So again, it's another variable just to watch out for if you are looking to buy. Jumping back into Chrome OS to have a look at a few other aspects of this Chromebook. So if we go into about Chrome OS and additional details, and I'll just zoom in there, you can see that the update schedule, you're gonna get updates on this Chromebook all the way through to June 2035. So it's still got a good long update life ahead of it. If we come out of there, back a step, and we look in diagnostics, and I'll maximize that, and zoom in here, let's look at the battery. So, it's a grade C refurb, you may have been expecting something drastic here, but look at that, 100% battery health, and just two battery cycles. So yeah, really pleased with that. Nothing to be concerned about at all with the battery. In terms of this being a grade C, I think it's just those scratches to the lid really and the fact that it didn't come with the original box or the original charger. Just getting set up with Real Racing 3 here to test out a bit of gaming on the 500e Gen 4. So much like the Duet I tested out earlier in the week, this has got an accelerometer sensor and a gyroscope sensor. So it's gonna work just like your phone would if you tilt it for steering, say in a game like this. 
So yeah, not something you get on all Chromebooks. Should be pretty nice. Let's try it out. If you've made it this far, hopefully the video has been worth a like. Do let me know what you think in the comments as well as always. It'd be great to hear from you there. If you want to check out another small Chromebook that I mentioned shares a lot of its DNA with this one, that's the video on the right. And if you prefer to see some more education-focused Chromebooks, that's the playlist on the left. Cheers, guys.